This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, We're talking about CE 2301 statics. Got a pretty easy, simple truss by joints method problem to look at. We've got a five member truss with those two 8 kip and 12 kip loads at the points B and C. And the goal is to find the force in all five of those members. So, the first step in these truss problems is to solve for the reactions, if you can, and you always can with these determinate trusses. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're gonna, I'm just going to do my free body diagram on the truss itself. You should probably draw one on your own. At A, I've got a pin, so I've got an AY and an AX reaction that I usually assume in those directions, positive up and to the right. At D I've got a roller so I've just got a vertical reaction dy. Now uh, typically when we have a rigid body like the entire truss uh, first thing we want to try to do is solve for sum of moments about a point to eliminate unknowns. So obviously I'm going to sum moments about point A to eliminate those two unknowns and solve for dy. So the sum of the moments about point A is zero, counterclockwise is going to be positive for this calculation. I've got this 8 kip load up here on the top trying to create counterclockwise rotation about point A, so it's positive 8 times the vertical distance of 12 feet. Then I've got dy also trying to rotate counterclockwise so it's positive dy times 16 and then I've got this 12 kip load over here at C trying to rotate the opposite way which is clockwise so it's negative it's 12 and its horizontal distance is 9 plus 16 or 25 I do the math I get 96 plus dy 16 minus this works out to be 300 so dy combining 96 and negative 300 makes negative 204 take it to the other side of the equal sign I've got positive 204 divided by 16 equals 12.75 kips the positive means my assign, uh, direction assumption was correct so it is up Then I can just do quick sum of forces in the y equals 0 equals ay, which I've assumed up, plus the 12.75 that I got from dy, minus the 12 kips out there at point C, means that ay works out to be negative 0.75 kips, which means it's down, the opposite of what I assumed. Sum of forces in the x direction, similarly, is real easy. Gives me ax, assume positive to the right, minus the 8 kips at b. Means that ax equals positive 8 kips, meaning the direction I assumed it. So I need to go over here to ay and reverse it on my drawing. So I'm going to do that in blue just to keep a record of it. So AY is 0.75 kips, AX is 8, DY is 12.75. Now I'm ready to proceed with my solution. With these trusses by joints, the first step is to find a joint with two unknowns. And so C happens to qualify for that, joint C. So now I want to get my member geometry, which is so critical on these truss problems. And just looking at the big truss, if you don't see this, and the first time out you're trying to do these kind of problems, especially on a test maybe, I just want to put the actual dimensions. BC is going 9 horizontal in the X direction. It's going up 12. Plug that into my calculator, that makes the hypotenuse 15. 
and then I realize, oh, that's a 3, 4, 5. Let's do the same thing with AB. AB goes up 12 and over 16, which makes the hypotenuse 20. Once again, a 3, 4, 5 is just uh, inverted from the geometry of BC. So now I draw a, uh, I'm back to joint C where I can draw a free body diagram. When I'm dealing with these joints, all I can do is sum of forces because I'm dealing with a point. And so it's just an equilibrium of forces. So this is member BC. This is joint C. I've got 12 kips down. And I've got the unknown force in DC, CD, here. Okay, so I want to look at BC's geometry. It is, I'm taking this slope diagram I have on the big truss up here and, in lar and uh, simplifying it down to a 3, 4, 5. Therefore, I have vertically four-fifths of BC. And I have horizontally three-fifths of BC. Now, as I say, on these truss by joints methods, I don't have a sum of moments equation to use because I'm just dealing with a point, point C, joint C. So I, all I'm limited to sum of forces in the X and sum of forces in the Y. So I look for the simplest solution. If I take sum of forces in the X, I have two unknowns. Sum of forces in the Y, I only have one unknown, that component of BC. So I do sum of forces in the Y is equal to zero. Positive is going to be up. And I have four-fifths BC minus 12. Rearranging, I can say BC is equal to positive 12 times 5 fourths. Multiply both sides that are to get rid of the 4 fifths. And so that's equal to positive 15 kips. The positive means tension. So that's one answer. I might write that out here, 15 kips tension. Keep track of all my answers on the truss. Now I can do sum of forces in the X. Positive to the right. I've got negative CD. Um, minus three-fifths. It's also to the left of BD, which I just figured is 15. Means that CD, rearranging and doing the math, is negative nine kips. Well, the negative means compression, the opposite of what I assume, so it's just like that. I'm going to show it on my diagram. If I had more work to do at that joint, I would go correct that direction, and I could, just for a second here in green, I could make that CD compression, which means it points at the joint. So that's nine kips compression. Okay, now if I was just proceeding on, and I've already got these reactions here at D, I would look at joint D. It's real quick. You can just tell by inspection what these forces are. So it se separate that out. Here's joint D. And I've got the unknown force BD, which I assume up. I've got the unknown force AD, which I assume to the left. And then I solve for the reaction at D, which is 12.75. And I solve for the force in CD, which is 9 kips. It's compression, so it's pushing at the joint, whatever, whichever end it's at. So at this end, it's pushing on that joint. This is joint D. So it's pushing with 9 kips compression. So this is real easy just by inspection. By sum of forces in the Y, I've got 12.75 from DY, and BD also going up, 
assumed up. So therefore it has to be, there's nothing else in that y direction, so uh, BD has to be negative or 12.75 kips compression. It's got to be the opposite direction of the reaction at D. Similarly, by the sum of the forces in the x direction, I can say that, well, if this, kip, this force from CD is 9 kips compression to the left, then AD has got to be reversed, and AD has got to be 9 kips compression. So, those two are just easy. They fall out of the uh, analysis of joint D. I'm going to show those on the diagram. I've got 9 kips compression here, AD, and I've got 12.75 kips compression here in BD. So the only one I need to solve for now is joint A. Free body diagram of joint A looks like this. I've got at now at a this is orientation three four five the force in member AB that I'm solving for and then I've got the force from AD which is nine kips compression I've got the vertical reaction at AY which is negative or 0.75 kips down and I've got AX eight kips to the right. So I've got one unknown and two equations so I can check my work and that's a nice thing. This is joint A. Sum of forces in the Y. I've only got, I can do either one of them. This is slightly simpler. I've got negative 0.75 from AY plus three-fifths, which I could do on there. The vertical of AB is three-fifths. The horizontal to AB is four-fifths. So I've got 0.75 down from the reaction at A, and I've got the three-fifths component of AB assumed up, which is what it turns out to be. So AB, rearranging and doing the math, works out to be positive 0.75 times 5 thirds so that's equal to 1.25 kips positive means tension I can check it with the sum of forces in the X at the joint that's equal to 0 positive 8 minus 9 and I just figured out that that's 1.25 and it's four-fifths of it is the horizontal component and that equals to 1 so it's 8 minus 9 and I'm sorry that is not a uh, oh yes 8 minus 9 plus 1 that's equal to 0 check